Peace, Peace news now. Now. So back up a little bit, get close like you like each other. I didn't okay. Want to pull the wire out on you. Oh, gotcha. You know it is when I'm an old grandma. You'll be fine. Here, I'll hold it so you've got plenty of room. Okay. And all right. So, uh, what are your names? What brings you out here today? Uh, I'm John Lang. Uh, I was involved from the very beginning, mostly in media and PR, and so I came out to say hi to all my old guy friends. Cool. Um, my name's Nicole DePontiano. I was also here from the beginning. I helped start the media team, and I wanted to uh, be around old friends and see actually what they had to thought about, think about things that are happening now. Very cool. My name's Kyle Crowdy. You've probably seen me here before. Um, you know, I came out today because two years ago tomorrow, I was actually skating down this street like, what the fuck am I doing? And showed up right over there to smoke pot and fucking tents. So. so today was really awesome. It's the celebration of two years uh, since Occupy. I've seen a lot of hugs and kisses and there was cake. Uh, it was good cake. Yeah, it was really good. Um, so what were you hoping to get out of uh, today? I mean, I, I just, I just wanted to see people. I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, I just, yeah. There, there was a, it was a really different and uh, sort of formative time in my life. Just seeing all these people who all stood up for something that they really believed in, and regardless of the legacy, I mean, you can't, you can't take that away from us. What we, what we had together. So I want to see. Everybody. Have you continued to stay active? Uh, I didn't initially after Occupy because I was frankly exhausted. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was very tiring, especially towards the end. Mm -hmm. um, and so now, now I'm starting to get that involved again. I, I live in New York now, so I'm starting to try to find my little activist corners in New York now. One of the things I'm asking people is, were you here at the end, and what was that like? I, w I was not here at the end. Uh, when, when the eviction happened, I was off working on some other things. Uh, I, I was honestly kind of disappointed by that point. Uh, it's so much happened. It was after the recent solution split and all that. So uh, I, I was not here. Was anyone here at the end? Um, I was. I was actually run over by a horse on uh, November 30th of 2011. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Was what was that like? <laughs> you know, it sucked. Um, <laughs> When you say but run over by a okay. horse, give us a picture of what that looks like. Yeah, um, the cops, the cops surrounded us. There's really good video of it, actually. The cops surrounded us with their bikes, and they were doing their one step thing where they push you up onto the curb. We get up onto the sidewalk, and they decide to just let their horsey friends in, and the horses charged up onto the sidewalk and started doing a figure eight. They ran over Vanessa over here in the background and broke her toes, and then it turned and it came down, and its knees hit me in the back. And the horse's head hit me in the back of the head. And, I mean, it was pretty fucking intense, but I mean... Tell me about the... <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Tell me about the role of the media group. What did you do as media? Um, well, our job as PR media was to get the message out there to uh, counteract the like, bad messages that the news and the incorrect information that the news was putting out there about the Occupy movement. So we did things, a uh, series of things, the, uh, a website, like we did a lot of posters, we did a lot of canvassing. Um, we actually even ran social media campaigns like Facebook, Twitter, which is a good part of how like everybody organized and got together, and even how like marches were and how things of that nature. We, we also spent time uh, figuring out who we who we want to go on to uh, actual radio shows and speak for us, and we also spent a lot of time because we didn't want to have any one person be the face of the leader of Bakhmat. So we spent a lot of time. You know, making sure that we had one message that we could give to anyone, anyone who could speak for us, giving a message that we could agree on. And that was probably the hardest part yeah. of, of being, it, it being media a PR was trying was trying to take this conglomeration of people with so many different beliefs and ideas and trying to get it down to a simple enough meme that someone could go on a talk show and talk about. I can imagine that was very difficult. Right? It was very difficult. I, I was on one. Um, where was it? At a. Uh, it's, it's down on six. I forget, I forget the name. It's right next to right next to ACP because I worked at ACP at the time. Um, well, one of the people passing by, I asked, you know, what was it like living near Occupy, and she said that she wasn't sure what the message uh, was because there were so many different views. Whenever she would approach someone, they came from such radically different points of view. Can you talk a little bit about um, the spontaneous order of the whole Occupy Philly movement? Well, I think that's part of the. Uh, 
about why the movement like fell apart because everybody had so many ideas. Like some people came from different political backgrounds, had different political beliefs, different religious backgrounds, and everything. And we all didn't unify under one specific message. Everybody had their own idea of how things should have been run. So it was, in a way, it was beautiful because uh, it brought some really good discussion and some really new perspectives. But at the same time, it was hard to organize. And it was hard, like the fact that somebody lived here, occupied, and had no idea exactly what it was about was a really big problem. And I know we tried to do that as a media uh, team, but. We also, uh, one of our biggest lessons was like how words can be twisted and how like things can be misconstrued and how even just like a group of people, uh, how that can turn into like a war or a bickering fight like really, really quickly. What were some of the unifying messages of the group? I imagine there there were some. I, I think I think the most uh, unifying one was economic egalitarianism. That we, we were sick of being dicked around by the corporations and we were sick of money and politics. I think that's one that I think everyone can agree on. And that's, that's saying a whole lot. But I, there, there was very little we could agree on. Um, <laughs> but I, th I think those are two things where I, I can say that and not be worried about someone coming back and being like, yeah, you're, you're an idiot. Um, but but I, think, I think the biggest uh, differences were how we thought we should deal with uh, the problem of economic egalitarianism and uh, deal with the problem of money and politics. There was, you know, there, there's a group of people that thought we should try to get reform passed. There's a group of people who thought we should uh, try to support candidates. There were group, and there were a group of people that thought we were beyond reform, we needed something new entirely. And we, we were trying really hard to give all of them equal air time, which you know, led to the confusion, but I mean, that's, that's part of uh, we Occupy was always big on being lateral and being democratic. And so that's one of the challenges, being lateral and democratic and not having a leader, which I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't betray that, honestly. As confusing as it was, I, I really think that was the best way to do it. No leaders, everyone's a leader. I, I hope that uh, I hope that more things come out of this. The the Occupy meme might be withering, but the idea that inspired it is still alive and well, and I, I can't wait for it. There's still a lot of unrest that hasn't been solved, even though Occupy's gone. That is very cool, guys. Thank you for the interview. Where can people learn more about the work that you produced or what you're working on now? I mean, I me personally, I'm not I'm not really working with much right now. I'm, I joined a couple of uh, nonprofit organizations in New York, but I haven't really quite gotten into it. I've joined a coder dojo in New York City, but I haven't been to mentors kids on how to code because I'm not a programmer in New York. So I, I thought that was big teaching kids technology because it, it's really empowering being good with technology. And then I'm also joined, just joined New York Cares, which is the biggest nonprofit volunteer in the New York City. So I haven't actually gotten to do anything with them yet. I've just got registered and I had to go through a training course. But so I, I'm kind of keeping up the deal and going to try to do it. Yeah, uh, I know. He's he's gonna come up with some nonprofit organization, big idea, and he's gonna change the world with it. <laughs> what about you? Where can we learn about your work? Um, I, I am an artist. Uh, I you can find my website at nicolaconziano.com. But with that, I believe in. Uh, we have a lot of inner city schools. Uh, our schools are. The situation is terrible in Philly, and I through STEM. I've uh, with the STEM program. I've gone to schools and talked to kids about the arts and how you can make it in the arts. Right? You don't have to starve, and you should follow your dream. Don't let them like pigeonhole you into some shitty job that so just so you can make money and be part of the system. And it's really inspiring to uh, to let the kids have fresh ideas. Wow, cool guys! Thanks yeah, so thank much. You. Thank you.